most impactful and memorable stories that we've ever told here are also the ones that we've been recognized for. One of those we're most proud of is this, the George Foster Peabody Award. Many consider it to be the most prestigious award in all of journalism. Few television stations are lucky to say that they have one. Broadcast Park has earned two. In the mid-50s, Iowa's News Now worked with Rockwell Collins to develop a multi-part documentary educating Eastern Iowans about the secrets of flight. For the first time, a wind tunnel was seen in public to demonstrate how it all worked. You might see it even better if I turn the blower down so that the whole field slows down and we see it in a slower motion. The pioneering broadcast earned a George Foster Peabody Award, one of the most prestigious awards a news organization can earn. Can I ask you guys what you're dumping? Almost 40 years later, another Peabody, this time for uncovering the biggest case of government corruption in Iowa history, the Cedar Rapids sewer solvent scandal. Leaders were buying chemicals at massively inflated prices, all at the expense of taxpayers. Intertrade was selling sewer solvent to the city for $27.50 a gallon. But Hydride of Waterloo will sell us a product that will accomplish the same job for just a buck eighty a gallon. Is somebody lining their pockets here? Yeah, well, I don't know. I don't think so. A number of people were lining their pockets and they went to prison for it. Along the way, um, I'll be honest, there were a lot of threats, a lot of people who blamed me. Um, for ruining lives. Um, but I guess the best day out of all of that was when everything went through the court system and one of the key players um, came out of court and he came up to me and, and, and shook my hand and said, I don't blame you. This was not your fault. When accepting the Peabody, Sandy Reesgraff repeated something said the first time Broadcast Park earned a Peabody nearly 40 years earlier. We don't claim to have the highest tower, the most powerful transmitter, or even to have the most authoritative voice. But we know our neighbors watch and listen to us. And for this reason, more than any other, we do our best to say what's important. What's important can oftentimes be very personal, including during the job crisis of the early 80s. Barry Norris and others at Broadcast Park had a unique idea. Dump our primetime programming and let people step up to a camera and say, Hi, uh, my name is John Waller and uh, my number is 7051 and I'm looking for work. So unique it got attention around the world. <laughs> and from the leader of the free world. I call to compliment you on what you're doing. Some of the most talked about stories from the 90s featured a baby girl stuck between two families. She wants her baby home where she belongs with her mother and her father. Baby Jessica was given up for adoption at birth by her mother, but shortly after she told the father what she had done and he fought to get her back. After a two-year battle, the little girl was taken away from the only parents she ever knew in Michigan and returned to her parents in eastern Iowa heart-wrenching to watch that transfer because there were two families that loved this little girl and she was two. And then there is Jody. This is CityCast with Jody Husentrup. Our former colleague here was on her way to anchor the morning news in Mason City when she vanished in 1995. To this day, there have been no signs of Jody and no clue as to who took her. 2001 brought one of the most devastating days in American history. Today our nation saw evil, the very worst of human nature, and we responded with the best of America. The World Trade Center attacked by terrorists and destroyed in a matter of minutes. It was all hands on deck. The impacts far and wide, especially when air travel was halted for days. And I was sent out to the airport, and it was just such a surreal experience, I remember, because the airport was completely empty. Weather has always played a major role in the work we do, but never greater than some of the major disasters experienced in recent memory. The railroad bridge has collapsed. It is now flooding downstream in the Cedar River. The flood of 2008 impacted hundreds of communities and devastated downtown Cedar Rapids, taking with it hundreds of businesses 
and thousands of homes. Memories of my kids' pictures gone, probably. Everything's gone. It's like, it's really hard to deal with. Even forcing Mercy Medical Center to shut down 10 blocks from the river. That's so far away from the river. How did the water get down to 10th and 8th? You know, that's so far removed from the Cedar River. And threatening to take the city's water supply with it, saved at the last moment by the residents themselves. And I got back up there and there were just cars all over the place. Hundreds of cars, people coming out with shovels. That's uh, the, an amazing There site. were over a thousand people there. They just showed up out of nowhere. And to this day, Cedar Rapids is still working to defend itself from the next great flood. The pandemic and derecho of 2020 combined for a one-two punch of perseverance by Eastern Iowa. Days without power in hot and humid conditions, all while trying to protect one another from a virus. Because I had maybe an hour to two hours left to live. It would eventually kill more than a million Americans. Still to come tonight, 70 years of sports at Broadcast Park. From the unexpected pioneer of the art form. I have never seen a team that I thought more deserving. To the incredible moments of Eastern Iowans winning on some of the biggest stages in sports. Also, a look at the future here at Broadcast Park and how it will benefit you as we celebrate 70 years at Iowa's News Network.